recording. As our lovely friend from Zoom said, we have started our recording. Welcome, everybody, to our 2024 Interscholastic Unified Bocce Briefing for the state tournament next week. On this call, we have Katie Turner, who's our bocce chair, Tyler Harrell, who's our IUS manager, and then myself, Zach Cintron, senior director of IUS. We also have George Hergenhan, who's joining us, who is our head official. Um, just in case there's any clarifications we need to do on rules, uh, we do have some rule stuff that we will cover tonight. Just the agenda, uh, main game plan as usual. We'll talk about logistics, uh, remind you about the event guide that will be out by the end of the week, remind you about credentials, and then all the competition stuff to prepare you guys for next week. That's Katie Turner. Uh, if you have not already met her, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of emails back and forth. You guys have probably sent in lunch orders to her. Um, and if you have not done so already, please make sure you do. That's Tyler. Uh, that is his contact information. If you've not seen information from him, uh, you've probably seen some emails at some point from him as well. And that's me and my adventure cat. Um, if you need anything, take a second really quick here to take down my cell phone number. Uh, especially for folks, if you get hung up in traffic in the morning, if something happens morning of, it's way better and easier to text me or call me in the morning than try to shoot me an email and then me see the email. It's it's just way better to get me on my cell phone. Um, additionally, if we happen to need something last minute from you, it's also good that you have my cell phone number because I do have an out of state New Jersey number. Just a reminder for you guys uh, that we will have medical on site to take care of you or your athletes should anybody get banged up or have an issue. Um, with that said, you guys are in charge of medical, whatever your district's procedures are between the second you get on the school bus until you get to us. So again, make sure you're checking with your administration, your district reps, whoever it may be, if there's a medical situation, what your protocol is, and if you need to reach out to us, there's our emails, but again, grab me on my cell phone. That's the be best way to get a hold of me. Location. If you do not know, it's at Hagerstown Community College. It's in the ARC, the Athletic Recreation and Community Center, and that is the address. Um, I think that is the direct address for the ARC. Um, for the most part, if you haven't been to Hagerstown Community College, I'll show you a map after this, but there's kind of one way in, uh, one way out. Sorry, typing my number in the chat in case anybody needs it. Um, so it, it's kind of, once you get in, just follow the loop and you'll run into the arc on the right-hand side. This is our schedule for the day. Um, it's been on our fact sheet for a while. This is the schedule that we've done for the past few years. We try to keep the schedule as consistent year to year to year as possible. So even when folks are starting up the season, should you be crystal balling to attend potentially the state tournament, it gives you an idea of what time things kind of kick off and go. The biggest thing that I'm really having you guys shoot for is arrival closer to 9, 930 than 930, 10 o'clock. Um, we have wiggle room for arrival up until 10 o'clock where we really start as our coaches meeting at 1015. But if you want to get any sort of warm up time on a court, try to get there 9, 915, 930. Uh, essentially, We'll do coaches meeting at 10.15, opening ceremony at 10.30, and then competition scheduled to be begin by 11. If for some reason everyone's there early, we'll start early, right? Say everybody's there by 9.30. We'll bump everything up 15 minutes to a half hour. We won't bump anything up until everyone's there. But should the situation come around where 9.30, 9.45, everyone's there, We'll bump everything up about 15 minutes to keep things going because I know it gets to be a crunch at the end of the day to get everyone back to school as well. Um, in case there is bad weather, as of right now, it's looking a little wet Monday into Tuesday of next week. Um, it's still going to be relatively warm, even though it's going to be wet in the 40s. Uh, so we will make a call. We always put essentially by 6 a.m. the morning of. I'm going to be a thousand percent honest with you guys. The way the busing situation is in school systems, if we're going to make a call, we're going to make it on Monday. We're not going to wait till Tuesday morning to make a call. That's too hard on you guys. It's too hard to get out communication to students, parents, so on and so forth. If we're going to make a call, we'll just make it Monday. I'll keep an eye out for things. 
But right now, it looks like it's going to be fine. For the most part, we either hunt on a, a weather day on Monday or we go ahead on Tuesday. It's kind of how it is realistically. With that said, should we need to punt weather day? It'll be the following day, Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. If for some reason the weather is bad that we have to punt and we go into Wednesday, Wednesday looks sunny and beautiful and warm. Um, and for some reason your team can't make it, that's okay. Don't don't panic. You know, it happens. We get it. Worst case scenario, if you cannot attend, we will send you participation awards if the weather royally screws everything up. Again, for the most part, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but we have ways to resolve everything, take care of your schools as we need to. Additionally, when it comes to making sure you show up, if something happens morning of where, God forbid, you have a team of six participants and two athletes are on that team and the two athletes don't come to school that day, bring your team still. Again, you guys will end up playing for participation. You won't be able to get uh, a full award, but don't deny the rest of the kids the opportunity to come and participate. We did have a school last year that had an issue in the morning and they said, well, we're not eligible, so we're not going. No matter what happens, come on Tuesday um, again. Uh, we can work things out. Just communicate with us. It may not always be the exact ideal scenario that you may want, but we will work something out for the benefit of your students to get them a good experience, to get them in competition, to get them awarded. They've earned the right to be at the state tournament. Questions on the uh, schedule slash what day it is slash weather game plan. Should we need to slide things around? Again, uh, I, I make this assumption now and I probably shouldn't, but if you have a question, you can always put it in the chat. If not, you can always raise your hand slash unmute the typical Zoom deal. Um, I, I keep forgetting that folks aren't on this all the time anymore, even though we are. Um, but again, ask questions if you have them. Let's talk event info. This, essentially this sheet, I recommend printing if you print anything out of these slides when we send them to you, to give to the bus driver. Essentially, these are just the directions of entering campus, dropping off you guys at the front of the ARC building, parking in the right lot, and then coming back to get you guys at the end of the day. Here's what the loop looks like. Essentially, like I said, there's one way in, one way out of Hagerstown Community College. I think technically there's some sort of small sneaky back way, but it's not super easy for buses to do. So essentially when you come in off the main road, you hook a right and follow the loop all the way around to the athletic center, which is the ARC building, and you get dropped off right out front. There will be flags from Special Olympics. There will be Special Olympics management team out there ready to greet you, to give you instructions, drop off in front of the athletic center. And then from there, buses go through the green lot L, into N or O. They can park in the back wherever they want there, come in, join us, whatever. Um, I know some buses do drop off and then come back. Whatever works for your driver, work it out. Please do share your phone number with your bus driver so that when you guys finish competition and you guys are going to get awards, that you can call them, say, hey, we're getting awards. We'll be out of here in 30 minutes. Come get us. Um, so that lets them know to have the bus ready, get you guys in and out. Um, additionally, just so you know, if there's somebody that is traveling, uh, as part of your team or whatever, if they need handicap parking, please reach out to me via email. There's not a ton of handicap parking, but in the back of the athletic center, there is uh, parking that walks right onto the gym floor. There's no stairs, no nothing that they have to deal with. Um, so if they have an issue, please reach out. Um, for the most part, if you have anybody traveling with your team that is a like a spectator or somebody that's not directly on your roster, an athletic director, other teachers that want to come, uh, student athletes that are traveling on their own for some reason, parents, please have them park in the green lot here, which is L. Um, you can technically park across the street in K. I will tell you that parking across the street in K, uh, that is student for HCCC parking. It's not like it's ticketed or anything, but a lot of the times it'll be absolutely full by the time you get there. So if you're looking for additional parking, the green lot and L is where you want to go. 
Um, again, if you have a request for anybody that needs a handicap or ground level parking, please send it to me by Friday so I can make a note. Uh, I like to put names on um, essentially traffic cones and save spots for them. Um, but again, if you don't need them, save them for other people. Um, there's not a lot of handicap parking in the back of the building there. Uh, before we go on to the other stuff, questions about dropping off when it comes to buses, parking for other people, handicap spots, any of that. Beautiful. Everybody must have had a, a long day at school. It's very quiet tonight. I'm not going to complain about that, and I understand. So um, just a heads up, we do offer a few additional things outside of our competition that are uh, activities and opportunities when it comes to our state tournaments. One of the things student athletes like a lot is we do sell merchandise. Um, we have hats and long sleeve shirts and sometimes sweatpants and all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of the times we also bring stuff that's left over from the polar plunge that happened this past weekend. Um, so tell your student athletes that if they want to bring money, um, if they want to use a card, we can even do Venmo. Um, we will have merchandise in the lobby that they can purchase. Uh, additionally, we typically have a table that's more geared towards you guys and um, administrators about our unified champion schools. While Interscholastic Unified Sports is one part of what we do with our schools, Unified Champion Schools is the other two components that makes up the whole school programming for Special Olympics across the country and internationally, quite honestly. Um, the other two parts are whole school engagement and youth leadership. Whole school engagement is essentially same thing that you do for any other varsity team, pep rallies, uh, ring ceremonies for state champions, so on and so forth. And then youth leadership, we're always looking to develop youth leadership groups within schools, within the state. I mean, there's there was a youth leadership group that went to Orlando for the past national games. There was a youth leadership group that went to um, Berlin for the last uh, uh, world games. So like there's always opportunities for leadership for kids in your school. So we'll have a table about that as well. Last thing is, I believe we will also have a table about healthy athletes, which is another program we offer across the state. Um, we want to make sure your student athletes are getting the best experience on and off the court. Uh, we want to make sure they're healthy when it comes to everything. Uh, essentially, it covers hydration and nutrition and, and healthy feet and hearing and uh, vision and all this kind of stuff. Um, we actually offer a pretty extensive version of this at our summer games at Towson University each year for a community program. Um, and we actually had an athlete that had never heard before go to national games and go through the healthy athlete segment. And they fitted him with a hearing aid that would actually allow him to hear for the first time. So um, our healthy athletes program is a really big deal. We want to make sure our athletes are living healthy lives on a day-to-day -day basis so they can compete at the highest level. Lunches and concessions. Um, everybody that's registered on your competition roster, um, we will send you guys essentially rosters towards the end of the week to confirm who's on your team. Make sure everyone's on there. Make sure all your coaches and paraprofessionals and all those folks that you want on your roster are on your roster um, essentially, most of you have sent in the lunch order form to Katie. If you have not, please do so ASAP. Um, but they're going to be Jersey Mike's lunches again. Jersey Mike's does a great job supporting Special Olympics Maryland and Special Olympics nationally. Um, it's going to be a regular size sandwich. Um, and then they put chips and like a cookie in there. Uh, we will provide a bottle of water for everybody. Um, and essentially, those lunch order forms that you send us, we will then pre-package whatever your order was into one box, hand you a box of all your lunches, hand you a case of water, and send you on your way back to the bleachers to have your lunch. Um, we found that to be the best situation to get you guys your lunch in the best uh, and most efficient uh, system that we can provide for you guys. With that said, the options are turkey and cheese, ham and cheese, and then I believe we're doing the veggie sandwich over the salad. I have to double check with them. Um, it's either a veggie sandwich or salad, but those are the options. If you have a student athlete where none of those work, please have them pack a lunch. Um, we know some folks have some pretty extensive allergies when it comes to food. Those folks should definitely pack a lunch, protect themselves so that they can have a good experience overall. With that said, additionally, the concession stand will be open at HCCC. Um, 
And so uh, that'll be an option on the table as well. If your student athletes want to order that, they can do that. If parents or athletic administrators want to order some sort of lunch, they can get it there. They're usually typical concession food, nothing life-changing, but definitely good food if you're looking for something on site. Um, uh, so I uh, have a question uh, from Coach Fisher. Um, they have a student set asking, can they get it plain with no lettuce and tomato? Unfortunately, we do lettuce and tomato across the board. They'll have to take that off themselves. Um, we got to do it as efficient as we can. And we tend to lean towards offering the lettuce and tomato. So you're not getting a piece of bread with, you know, meat and cheese on it and nothing really to go with it. So um, have your student athletes peel the lettuce and tomatoes off if they don't want it for sure. Questions with lunches or the auxiliary kind of offerings that we offer at our state tournaments. Okay, into the competition stuff. Credentials, reminder that everybody that gets a credential is are the people that are on your roster. Essentially, when we send you that roster at the end of the week, make sure it's all the folks that are your coaches, your paraprofessionals, uh, your student managers, and then all of your student athletes that need a credential to access the competition floor. I've had people ask in the past, um, hey, I have a paraprofessional. They just stay in the stands should the student need them. They don't need to have a credential. If they're going to be somebody in the stands supporting your team, they don't need a credential. You don't need to hop through the hoops of getting them certified for various things. Um, again, it's one of those things where if somebody needs to be on the competition for directly with athletes or unified partners, they should be credentialed. So we will send you guys that sooner rather than later. Worst case scenario, it's end of the week. Keep an eye out for that. Please review those rosters and let us know if we're missing anything. We will also send you the event guide at the end of the week. It'll cover a lot of the same things we're covering right now. It'll cover some things in extra detail, uh, but for the most part, it is a written document that covers all this stuff that we're covering now. Keep it on you, review it, and if you have questions, please reach out. Staging for matches. Uh, essentially, we will have the PA system in the arc that we will use. Um, and essentially, we will make announcements prior to every match who's going to be on what court. Um, we also encourage you to look at the schedule. For the most part, the first match or two matches are planned and scheduled, which means you can take a peek and you can report to the table a few minutes early. Um, again, when you are ready to check in for your match, come down to the floor, come to the bocce control center where Katie Turner is going to be or our volunteer team and check in and make sure they know that your team is there. Don't just go to your court. Um, and we want to make sure that you guys check in so we don't miss anybody. And then we also get to that spot of we're looking for one team ready to start the matches. We can't find them. With that said, uh, we will make a primary call for everybody for their matches, get everybody to the courts, if we're missing a team out of court, we will make a second call. And if we don't have a team that makes it by the second call, we're not going to wait. We're going to start the clock. And if the other team doesn't show up within the first minute of that match, it's a forfeit and the other team wins. So make sure you guys are down there on the floor at the right time to check in. Uh, we know it gets a little bit more challenging as the games go on. Somebody wins, somebody loses, you move forward in a bracket here, you move forward in a bracket there. We will work with you. We will communicate with you. Um, again, just keep us in the loop and we'll keep you in the loop. Um, additionally, when a set of matches is over, we will do our best to turn around getting those results updated on the uh, brackets slash the division sheets of who's in what place, who's won what game, so on and so forth but you got to give us a few minutes to get it all set up. It's more important for us to get the results put together so we can get all the teams on the floor next to keep things moving and then post results than the inverse, because then you're just waiting to get, to get on the floor and we're there all day. Additionally, as the day goes on, if you have a question about scores or who's in the lead for what, do not go to Katie. Ask one of our volunteers that are around Katie's area, hey, I'm just looking for an update on my team, either for a score or for what we're playing next. 
because Katie's going to be the main person taken in the forms from the last round, sorting everything out, updating brackets, and getting everybody back on the floor. We have a bunch of coaches going to Katie all the time, checking in. Hey, what's the update with my team, my team, my team, my team? One, it's super frustrating. Two, it stalls everything up. So if you have questions, ask the people that are helping Katie. Let Katie do her thing. And actually, Zach, I can chime in real quick. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm so sorry. I have an uh, soon to be three month old and he is not happy with me right now. Um, so, yes, please. When matches are going on, if there is a natural law, by all means, you can come over and talk to me. I am more than happy to talk. I love talking. It's just when I'm trying to get matches back out on the courts and there's that general shift between that is not the ideal time to come and talk with me or ask questions. Honestly, try to find another SOMD personnel. Like if you are going to contest something or you have a question or something, that is not the time to come and talk with me. Unfortunately, like uh, Zach said, it gums up the works. I want to get your teams out there as fast as I can because we are on a time crunch. I know you all have to catch buses. Some of you have very long commutes home. So it's not me being mean or short with anybody. It's purely I want to keep us to the schedule so that we can get your people home in a reasonable time. That's perfect, Katie. Thank you for chiming in. Uh, Coach Jennifer, you got a question. Uh, yeah, so I was um, I was totally listening, Katie, and you explain that beautifully i was actually also reading to what you had already put up zach um so i have a real quick question i have a student with like severe behaviors and i uh, have to, when you were in southern maryland so you saw me going probably me going into the actual court with the student is that okay still can i go yes. into the court and hold the tube and have somebody else hand him the ball yeah, so that's that's okay. one of those things that's we'll talk about that here and then also with the like quote unquote no coaching rule, right? There are we work with a population that some individuals need more assistance than the others. That that's just the reality of it, right? Um, and I think that's one of those things that send me a quick note uh reminding me so I can put notes on like this team needs X, this team needs Y for for whatever. Um again, just so we can also tell our officials, hey. When this team comes onto your court, just know that this is a accommodation that we're making. So send me a quick note, Coach Jennifer. Also, if there's any other coaches with teams that, you know, I have an athlete that really needs me to be here, or we have an athlete that if you're not holding her hand or if you're not standing behind the Polina, they can't see it. Whatever it is, send me a note. I know a good batch of your teams and what some of their needs are. Um but by no means do I know all of your athletes. And I wish I did know them more personally. But um, if you have an accommodation that you need for an athlete, send me a note so I can make a note so that our officials know, so that I remember. And if a coach has a question about what's going on with your team, hey, they reached out. This athlete has some behavior situation stuff. They need to move on to the court with them to make this happen and give them a good experience. Perfect. Great. That works for us. Um. Protests. Uh, this is something that's come up recently. I'm trying to explain it better and better year after year. If you think there is something that is wrong with your match as you're going on, rules, um, maybe just the, the flow of the match or how things are going. Step one is always go and ask the head official on the court, hey, I have a question about this. Based on my experience, I thought X, Y, or Z. Why is, you know, A or B happening? Um, again, Communicate with the officials, you know, just politely engage them. Uh, for the most part, they're all good folks. Uh, they all know their sport pretty well. Um, they may come from some backgrounds of minor variations on the sport. Ask them first. If you get an answer and you think it seems wrong, um, then you should come off the court and grab a Special Olympic staff member. We'll then step on. We'll talk to the official. We'll talk to you guys. And we'll make it happen. The best thing to do is to pause the game and get a resolution then instead of letting it drag on and on and on. With that said, if there's something that repeatedly happens that you think shouldn't have happened, you tried to engage the official um, and there's a rules violation, it's not something that is a judgment call, right? You can't protest a judgment call for an official. We stand by our official's judgment of the game, but if there's something that comes up that continues to happen you know, you can file a protest. Uh, the one that comes up the most that is a protestable situation, but has a, a different 
resolution than what a protestable other protestable situation may be is coaching, right? Well, their their coach or their athletes or their partners were talking to them when they were getting in the box or whatever. If there's a coaching situation, again, get the referee, get one of us. We will step in. Coaching uh, gets essentially resolved in three different ways, and we'll talk about this later too. Step one, coach gets warning. Step two, uh, a ball is removed from play for that team. Step three, the coach is removed from that game overall. Step four, if it continues to happen, we'll take the credential away from the coach and they'll sit in the stands the whole time. Um, so that is one that comes up pretty consistently, probably once a year at least at a district tournament or something. Um, and we go through those steps to resolve it. Um, additionally, another item that could be a protestable situation is um, that um, we we didn't have the, let's say, the the shortened foul line for wheelchairs and ramps. Um, some people use them. Some people don't use them. You could come and protest that we didn't set the courts upright. Um, that would be something, and that could be reviewable, and essentially that could change the outcome of the game. Um, the biggest thing I recommend to people when it comes to protest Protect your student athletes. That's what it's there for. Number two, by no means by filing a protest, are we going to be upset with you? Are we going to be like, oh, that coach Jennifer always filing those protests. We're going to get her next time. <laughs> you know it. Don't be <laughs> messing. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Exactly. So we're not going to you know, have ill will against you because you're protecting your student athletes. But also don't use a protest at the last minute because you don't like the outcome of the game. If something's wrong, say something early so that we fix it so that, you know, we can make a note of it early on, not just at the last minute when your team loses. Um, that tends to be what happens. We want you to protect your athletes from start to finish, not just at the end. Should there be a protest? Essentially, there's a rules committee. It would be our head official, George, one of our other officials from Washington P County Public Schools and our VP of Sports. Um, they would review it. Uh, more than likely, Katie Turner will also have some input on it. It'll be approved or denied. If it's denied, you can also file an appeal to it. And then we have 48 hours to essentially convene a rules committee to go over it, so on and so forth. Um, biggest thing that I can say here is if you have an issue, talk to the official. Stop the game if we need to stop the game. Let's fix things. Um, also, one note to remember um, you will see this in the event guide. If you do not agree with the outcome of the game and you want to file a protest, when we finish the game and we have you guys sign off on the score sheet, don't sign the score sheet. If you think there was something wrong, before you sign that score sheet, say that you want to file a protest, talk to somebody from SOMD, whatever, don't sign the score sheet until we resolve whatever we need to resolve, okay? Questions on protests, I know it tends to be a lot and pretty confusing at times. Again, if you think something's wrong, ask the official. Grab an SOMD staff member or somebody that is on the competition floor. Let us know. Bocce balls, please bring at least one set for your team. It's the only thing we ask you to bring with you. We will have the courts and everything else. Please make sure to bring your own bocce balls. In the scenario that you need another set, something happens, you get off the bus and one rolled out a window so you don't have a full set, we will have a few extra sets, um, but please do bring your own set of bocce balls. When you do check in as a coach, when you get your coach's packet, we will also weigh and check your bocce balls because indoor balls are the only ones that could be modified when it comes to um, blowing them up, letting air out, size, weight, and stuff like that. Outdoor bocce balls, we don't have that same issue. Some bocce rule reminders. When you release the bocce ball, whether you're standing, crouching, doing a backflip, whatever it may be, it has to be released below the waist. The only exception is if somebody's in a wheelchair and they're using a ramp, there's a scenario then where they're sitting and the ramp is higher than where they're sitting. Um, again, must be delivered below the waist. If in a situation where the ball is delivered uh, illegally, the ball is released above the waist. They step over the foul line, whatever it might be. The court official has the right to intercept the illegally delivered ball. 
to save the court state. The last thing we want to do is have somebody deliver the ball incorrectly, which is going to be taken out of play anyway, and then knock all the balls all over the place and change the, the setting of the game. With that said, for the most part, if somebody is delivering the ball uh, above their waist, they've stepped over the foul line, most times our officials will give them at least one warning to let them know, hey, just a heads up, mistakes happen, it can't happen again. If it continues to happen, that's when the official will step in and either remove the ball from play or intercept the ball before it changes the state of the uh, the court. Um, again, if you have a concern about illegal deliveries not being called or whatever it may be, grab the head official, grab George, grab myself, grab somebody, and we'll step in. We'll keep an eye out. We'll double check things. We'll fix things before they get worse. Here's the coaching section. Just clarity on the coaching stuff. I think for the most part, folks did good. Um, we did see some coaching at the district level that if it continued on and on without changing, would have been penalized. Essentially, when somebody picks up a bocce ball or Polina and steps into the court, you can't talk to them anymore. That's considered coaching if you talk to anyone when they step into the court once they have the ball. With that said, we need to be realistic that there are some athletes out there that need more assistance than others. Like we were talking about with Coach Jennifer, she has an athlete where she or a unified partner or somebody has to get into the court with them, has to communicate with them a little bit. Otherwise, they can't even participate. We got to be realistic as coaches that sometimes there are individuals that have additional needs, and thus we can't be hard and fast on the coaching rule for those type of situations. With that said, in every other situation, you've trained your student athletes how to play the game, how to work together to talk and plan before they step into the court, that once they pick up that Polina or that bocce ball and they step in that court, let them do their thing. Don't keep coaching them. The second bullet point is, if you don't pick up a bocce ball or a Polina and your student athletes want to converse amongst themselves about how they want to approach the next throw, they're more than welcome to do that. They can take time. They can converse one another. That's part of youth leadership and them being teammates and supporting each other. With that said, if the ball isn't delivered within 45 seconds of the official noting it's Red's ball, they're going to say something about stepping in and delivering the ball. Um, Additionally, if you have a player that is uh, not going to step in and pick up a ball and wants to come back to where the coach's area is that we've taped off at the back of the court and around the sides of the court, they can step back and talk to you as a coach And if you stay behind that line. Again, don't want to hold up the game, want to keep things moving, but they can do it. Essentially, just remember, once they pick up that bocce ball and they step in that court, conversation is over. Uh, no, that, that was a good question, Grace. Again, I'll, I'll respond to that as well. What about coaching from their teammates as long as they're outside of the court? Yes, as long as they're outside of the court and they haven't picked up a bocce ball and stepped in, they can converse. But again, 45 seconds kind of hits that point where an official will say something to keep going. If an official continuously has to remind a team that, come on, 45 seconds, let's go deliver the ball, if it happens multiple times, they'll call a delay of game penalty. A delay of game penalty will have them remove one ball from the balls that you can still deliver to uh, penalize your team. We do not have a lot of this. If we have anything, it's the coaching aspect. It's not the delay of game. But please keep things moving. We want to get as much play in in the 30-minute window as we can. Uh, again, we talked about this really quick earlier. Now you can see it on the screen. Uh, coaching infractions, essentially there's various levels of uh, the discipline for coaching. If an official says that there is an offense for coaching, the coach will be warned or reminded of the coach's rules. Again, we'll give you a grace one. People make mistakes. People need to communicate with their student athletes, but there's an appropriate way to do it. If it happens as a second offense, then one ball will be removed from your team's playability for that frame. The third offense, the coach will be removed from the game, and then any following offense after strike three, the coach will have their credential revoked, and they'll have to stay in the stands the whole time. Additionally, 
This doesn't reset game to game to game. If this continues to happen and you get your first two offenses in the first game and the second game you get another offense, that's your third offense and you're pulled from that game instantly. If you have three offenses and you go into another game and you get another offense, that's it. Your credential gets pulled and you're in the stands. Um, we have never had to go this far when it comes to coaching or issues. Most of the time, it's a reminder on a violation. We resolve it and we're good to go. Additionally, during our coaches meeting on site, we will do it at the control center. I will walk you guys over to a court and we will talk about this in the actual area where you can see the lines for the coaching box. We can talk through it a little bit for some clarity. This is all really great, but it's tough when you don't have a visual. Uh, additionally, remember to use your rotation properly. We want to make sure that your student athletes are getting equitable play time for everyone on your team. Um, and again, you guys should have a rotation down by this point that your student athletes know what it is and know how to execute it. Additionally, we added the rule this year that rosters that are five to seven, you need to do your best that whoever played in the last frame gets a chance to play in the frame that's upcoming. So again, if you had four people play and you have seven people on your team, the three that didn't play in the last frame should absolutely get rotated in, plus one who played in the last frame. Again, we want you to make sure that your student athletes are all getting an equitable, good experience. This is the state tournament. A lot of them will only potentially even get to one or two of these in their uh, high school career. So make it a good experience for them. Um, again, one thing that I did see at district tournaments is if you have student athletes that have to switch from one side to another with the rotation, please have them stay at one side until the frame ends and then switch sides. Student athletes that are switching mid frame can cause confusion for officials of who's where. And then additionally, sometimes somebody tries to avoid somebody, doesn't want to bump into somebody in between courts, steps into a court and messes up the court state. We don't want that to happen. Please wait to rotate until the end of the frame. Substitutions. Uh, there's always confusion on substitutions. I'm going to try to clarify it now. Um, we will cover a lot of these same things at the coaches meeting, but I want to clarify it now. Substitutions of those alternates on your rosters. If you have a 10-person roster, those are spots 9 and 10 on your roster. You can make those at any time during a game, technically, between like roles. you got to switch an athlete for an athlete or a partner for a partner. Once you swap somebody out of that ninth or 10th position into your top eight, the person that was subbed out is out for that whole game. So with that said, like it says in the rule book, it's highly recommended that you either do that between full games, so they get to play a full game, they get to get settled in the game, they get a full game experience, or switch them out about 15 minutes in, which is halfway through the game, so that they can get a good experience. Um, if you have a situation where you need to make a substitution of an alternate or swap somebody in uh, off of your nine and 10 because there's an injury or something, tell the official, tell an SOMD staff member, we'll work with you on that. That's a different circumstance. Um, one really big thing that I saw at district tournaments that made it really hard on officials and I officiated at some of the tournaments and it made it really hard on me is that if you have student athletes, do not have them pick up a bocce ball or a Polina until they're ready to step in a court and deliver a ball. We had situations where students were picking them up and holding them and playing with them in their hands while the game was going on. And quite honestly, there was one game where I didn't realize somebody was holding one. I thought all the balls were delivered. And I started moving balls because I thought the point situation was already resolved. And they said, but we still have one more ball. I can't see it if it's in your hands. All the officials look to the corner of the courts where the frame is happening to be able to count balls. Please leave them on the floor in the corner of the court that you guys are playing from until you're ready to step in and play. That is a huge thing that we need you guys to make sure your student athletes know. Um, we will remind them if they're picking up bocce balls, but please, please, please. Tell them to leave them on the floor so our officials can keep track of where the game is. Um, additionally, I don't, I don't know why I don't think I've mentioned this at this point. Our games for state are either uh, 30 minutes long or to 16 points. Um, a lot of districts go shorter, but our games are 30 minutes or to 16 points. Um, I need to add a slide about that. 
Before we move on to uniforms, questions on any of the rule stuff we covered, coaching, substitutions, anything. If something pops up that you have a question, please email, text, call me in the next couple of days too. I'd rather resolve it early or potentially go into the coaches meeting to have it as a point that we should cover. Um, but again, please reach out if you have a question. Uniforms. For the most part of district tournament, uniforms were great. Um, the main thing is that we want them wearing some sort of non-legging, non-crazy design pants along with whatever your team top is. Most teams all have some sort of jersey or shirt or whatever that has the Unified Sports logo and the team on it. That stuff is the easy part. I don't think we really have any issues with teams there. We don't want student athletes showing up in leggings or pajama pants um, or realistically jeans. If you want to wear like khaki pants like you would for like bowling or something like that, that's fine. Um, but on the bottom, make sure that they're none of those that I just mentioned and make sure they don't have any crazy designs on it. If you want to tell your student athletes, hey, for the state tournament, we're all wearing black shorts. One kid can go to Target and get a pair of black shorts. One kid can go to Walmart and get a pair of black shorts. As long as they're just plain black shorts, just set that tone for your team. If you want them to be sweatpants or joggers, that stuff is fine. Set the tone for your team of what to wear. Um, we want it to be as uniformed as possible. If you have matching pants, if you have matching shirts, that's the dream. Not every school has that. I get it. Uh, some stuff continued on uniforms. If you have somebody that shows up in the improper uniform, doesn't have your jersey or right shirt that they came with, wearing leggings slash um, uh, jeans slash crazy shorts that they're not supposed to be wearing, all of that applies to the uniform. If they're not wearing the right uniform, they won't play. They need to wear the right uniform just like any other varsity sport asks you to. Um, if at some point we realize it and a match is in play, we will let the match finish, uh, but there will be a forfeit for the pair or skills. Um, essentially, what that means is if you have somebody on your roster that's not wearing the right uniform and it drops you below our minimum ratio for a frame, two athletes, two partners, three athletes, one partners, if it would put you to a point where your team wouldn't be eligible, you would forfeit that game. Uh, sweatpants is cool. That is a great question. Uh, just tell them we're wearing gray sweatpants, whatever you want at that point, Coach Fisher. Um, I will say we didn't really have that many issues with pants or jerseys or any of that stuff that I saw at districts. The biggest thing that I saw that is the biggest violation and is more of a safety thing, quite honestly, is non-athletic shoes. We're talking Crocs and slippers and slides and all those. If they want to wear those on the bus because they're comfortable, let them wear them. Pack a pair of athletic shoes to wear. We just don't want anybody going out there on the court and slipping. I mean, again, you find a wet spot on the court from somebody, somewhere, something. If you're not wearing the right shoes, you can slip. Just We want people to be safe more than anything. So the shoes are probably the bigger thing to harp on with your student athletes. Um, questions with uniforms before we cover the venue. Fantastic. This is the venue layout. Um, for those of you that have been there before, venue layout is going to be exactly the same as usual. For those of you who have not been to States, essentially uh, where the main lobby is, you guys walk through and you come into the gym. The main things that you need to make note of is the student and spectator area up top there's a huge set of bleachers that everyone fits into with plenty of room. Uh, the other thing is, this is the order of the courts and how they will go. They will start at one on the right and they will go to 11 on the left. Um, 11 is the court that we will use for warm up and practice throughout the day. If you would like time on the warm up court, all you have to do as games are going on is come down there. We will have a key volunteer. They will say, hey, okay, you want time on here? We got a team on, they'll be done in five minutes. You're on next, you get 15 minutes, so on and so forth. Um, the other thing that I really want you to make note of is when you check in before a match, we want you coming to this pink square rectangle, whatever you call it down here. That is where the uh, officials for our competition team will be. That's where Katie will be located. That's where you check in is the pink rectangle. When you are done at the end of the day and you're ready for awards, 
there will be bleachers facing this wall down here and awards will be given out in the green strip. Um, we will stage you in the bleachers. The law enforcement officers will be taking point on uh, awards along with Tyler Harrell. Um, and essentially, um, go in the bleachers. We stage you. We call you. You get awarded. Take pictures. You're good to go home. In the middle of the day, when lunches are available, typically over in this section where you see lunch tables is where we will have lunches ready for pickup. We will make an announcement that coaches can send one or two people from their team over to lunches to pick up for the day. I will also point all of this out in detail at the coaches meeting. Speaking of the coaches meeting, this uh, yellow section here is where we're gonna have our main control center set up. If you have any non botchy questions, they can be asked there. If you have a protest, please go there. Um, if you need an extra bottle of water, please go there. Um, if you need a copy of your rosters again for some reason, please go there. For all those type of things, please go to this control center. Again, when you walk in, uh, your teams will go to the bleachers. You as a head coach, head coach will come over to the left side of the control center here. You'll check in. You'll get your paperwork. Uh, our uh, volunteer slash uh, staff members who are there will tell you this is what's going on for the morning. Here's the game plan. And then you'll step over to this wall where the purple section is. That's where they'll check your bocce balls and make sure they're okay. After that, you're good to go. Uh, last thing to make note of is this light blue, purple, whatever color you want to call it. On that wall there is where we will update the results. Uh, we will update the brackets. We'll be over there. So for the most part, if you are looking for updated situations, scores, that type of stuff, please check in at that wall for those updates. Questions on the venue. Fantastic. Uh, so just so folks know, we are finalizing divisions and stuff now. We will have them to you by Friday morning of this week at the latest. Uh, I expect we will have it to you guys earlier. Um, Katie is finalizing those right now. We're going to take a look at them, do a double check. We want to make sure we really look at them really good so you guys have a good division that you're put in based on the assessment scores that you guys turned in. We want your student athletes to have a good experience. Um Again, your rosters are locked in as of your district tournament, but we will send you guys rosters to confirm more or less not your student athletes. We have them on your competition roster, but again, we want to make sure all your coaches, your student managers, your paraprofessionals are listed on your rosters and get credentials if they need it. It's really tough for us morning of to hear, hey, this person didn't make it to my roster. They need a credential. We'll work to get it for you, but it's really tough to turn around in the morning when we got everything else going on. So again, keep an eye on your emails. We will make sure that we have uh, competition team divisions to you by Friday morning at the latest. Uh, any questions with any of that uh, venue, logistics, competition, divisions type of stuff before we hit a few final slides? All right. Awards, again, uh, we will have you come over to the awards area. We will stage you in the bleachers and essentially just listen up for announcements at that point. There will be a, a speaker system over there. Um, we'll call the teams. We always call teams in the lowest placement to the highest placement. Um, with that said, typically, for the most part, the way we set up bocce is in brackets. We do a winners and losers bracket. If you win your first game, you keep moving on in the winners bracket. If you lose your first game, you go into the loser's bracket to play for third and fourth place. If you end up in that loser's bracket and you happen to lose your first game and your second game, you are guaranteed at least two games and you're probably done at that point. If you lose your first two games, we're ready to award you and send you on your way. Uh, by that point, you've probably already had lunch and stuff too. Um, so awards technically can happen as early as I'd say... 1 one thirty, depending on uh, the outcome of your first two games. Uh, with that said, too, when you come to awards, make sure you're not wearing any jackets or hoodies or anything extra. Come over in your uniforms because we want to get good pictures of everybody. Um, we want you to be able to take good pictures of your team to share with families and school administrators, so on and so forth. 
they have volunteers. If you know anybody from your school systems or uh, student leadership groups that would like to volunteer for the day, please reach out to Sam Boyd. Um, she can get you guys registered or whoever you have. We're more than happy to take volunteers from your schools. Um, we always love seeing student athlete groups. I know for outdoor bocce, Crofton High School brings a whole bunch of people from Anne Arundel from one of their youth leadership groups. It's awesome. Um, so please reach out if you have any questions about that. Um, yes, we will also feed the volunteers uh, if you do have volunteers come out as well. But if you have questions, reach out to Sam Boyd. She'll get you taken care of for any volunteers. Again, if you are running late, please take down my cell phone number. If you have not done so already, have that ready. Uh, also have your bus driver's number so you can let them know when you are ready to leave between having my number and your bus driver's number, um, uh, we can get you guys situated and taken care of. Um, there's my cell phone number again, Katie just sent it in. Uh, Coach Fisher asked about how do I get my school in outdoor bocce? You need to ask your district rep uh, about how to get into outdoor bocce. It all depends on what your school offers in the spring. Um, I know some of our uh, districts take up our outdoor bocce for our spring sport. Some of them do track and field. Um, but then again, there are also schools that do non-unified sports activities in the spring as well. Um, I believe Baltimore County does something different in the spring as well. So um, ask your athletic supervisor or whoever is in charge, Coach Fisher, about outdoor bocce. Last note, uh, if you do not know who your district rep is, I would be very surprised if you need their email. These are their emails. Um, again, they've done a great job all year getting everything in the loop, getting you guys in the loop, getting district tournaments done. Um, great job. And uh, if you need their contact info, it's there. And now it comes to the point where I will open it up for questions if you have additional questions. This is my, my favorite thing compared to our community program that I used to be part of. Those coaches, you get to the question part, and we're here for 45 more minutes on questions. You guys, you've had a long day at school. You got through this webinar. You'll reach out to me if you have questions, but otherwise, you want to go home. Um, I will give one more second if anybody wants to ask a question. Um, additionally, if you don't want to ask a question on the recording, when I turn off the recording, if you would like to stay and ask, you're more than welcome to as well. I have a quick question, Zach. Um, sure. I heard you mention about having the unified emblem on our uniforms, yes. and that's not something that we actually have on ours. So what would you okay. like us to do? I have patches that I will bring for you um, <laughs> that I will make sure you guys have them realistically. Um, you know what? I might be able to get them to you earlier. Anita, are you going to be up at school throughout the week? I don't yes. think there's any. Maybe I can drop them off to you at some point um, to see if we can get the patches on. They're like iron-on patches. Okay. Um, so let me let me touch base with you after. I will send you an email to see if we can connect at some that's point great. this week for a drop off. Thanks. Um, great. Yeah, I, some some folks. That's a good that's a good question. Um, some people get uniforms before they are involved in unified sports, and we have this unified uh, sports requirement. Um, we have patches that we can resolve that with. Again, make sure you're talking to your athletic directors about getting in the loop for um, the update and stuff. I will bring some with me as well. Um, if for some reason we have to hand them off to you at state, we'll make an exception for this year, give you the patches, um, and we will go from there. But Anita, I will connect with you. And Coach Fisher, I will also connect with you as well. Um, everybody else seem okay on uniforms, though? I think everywhere I've gone, all the uniforms look great. Um, so you do not need, you don't need to have patches specifically. You do need that unified sports pill logo like you see at the top right. Um, so Coach Walsh, if you don't have them um, as well, um, yeah, so we what, just like yeah. for like a Catonsville uniform, we don't have any logos or anything on it. That's fair. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest thing is Baltimore County is with your county being new and not being primarily in unified sports. It's not something you've had to anticipate. Um, let's do it this way. If folks do not have the unified sports pill, 
uh, on their logo and they are in need of patches, please email me after this. Um, reach out to me, email me. I'm going to see if I can make a connection with somebody to get everybody. Um, with that said, uh, should folks not have the patch or the logo on it, um, we've also hit kind of the 11th hour for it at this point. If we need to make a list of exceptions for this year, as long as your uniform has everything else, we'll be okay with it. Um, but I will do my best to see if I can get patches distributed before the end of the week. So um, worst case scenario, some coaches might be doing some ironing uh, over the weekend. Other questions that have come up. I was going to say, Zach, it seems like a lot of us are getting confused between patches and logos. So as long as you have Special Olympics in the pill up there on the corner or even the emblem up there on your yep. uniform, you're square. You don't have yes. to have the patch. Like, I think that's where everybody's getting a little potentially gotcha. confused. Um, Cause I used to coach in Prince George's County and I know we had it on our uniforms. So that's why I'm like, I don't think the uniforms have changed. If they have, I mean, I haven't been there in 10 years. So who knows? Yeah, yeah. Again, you don't specifically need patches. Um, you need to have the Special Olympics Unified Sports logo um, on it. The patches is just a quick fix for schools that don't have the logo because they got their uniforms before they were required for the logo. Very good point for Katie. Um, but again, please email me if you think that's an issue um, and we'll work to get that taken care of. Other questions that anybody has before we close out? Yes, Zach. Hi, this is Lori from Potomac. How are you? Lori, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Quick question. Um, we normally get the same bus driver um, that normally comes for us. But sure. my question is, we are on a school bus. These are special needs baby. Yeah. And I, like we had a trip from Northwestern to Potomac, which is a nice ride. And I had a young lady, she urinated on herself. Sure. Have you communicated with or has it been communicated to the lots to stop for a bathroom break? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, if you guys need to stop, if that's part of your trip that you need to stop and make a stop or whatever, that's why you guys have my phone number. Hey, we're running a little bit behind, Zach. We had to stop for a team bathroom break. Do what you need to do. Again, you need to take care of your student athletes. Um, you know, don't don't make a ton of side stops if you don't have to. But bathroom breaks are a legitimate need. Pull off, use the bathroom, send me a text. Hey, we had a bathroom stop. We're probably 15 minutes behind. No, that's not the concern. The concern sure. that that we always have with um the we get this particular driver is he's very rigid. And if it's not communicated to the lot to say that we are permitted to stop sure. for these children, that's what I need someone to either do. I don't know if you want the AD to do it or who calls a lot to say, hey, you have to make a stop if there's a need, you know, because of the children. Hey, sure. Coach, so, I, Zach, I'll jump on this one if you don't yeah. mind. I was going to say, Coach, have your AD or even your head principal call the bus lot. I worked in Prince George's County. I understand the bus lot and how rigid they are. And yes. they're stuck on to that schedule and they are there to make their money. Um, they, You need to have someone from your administration contact that bus lot to explain that this is it in I'm assuming it's probably in the child's IEP that they need to do this or else it's a violation and could be leading to a lawsuit so you know the large that, that lovely I jargon it. I know what you're saying so I'll yeah. have the AD do it okay I just want to make sure that it's permissible because you know there's no bathroom and I had that issue you know a parent had to pick their child up soaking wet you know and I don't want to deliver kids like that understood yeah, Poor baby. yeah. <laughs> please please stop and have her use the restroom nobody wants that Absolutely. Oh. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Other questions? Concerns? Okay. I'm not going to keep folks here just to keep you here. Um, again, if you do have questions that pop up in the next few days, we will be communicating more information to you, event guide, divisions, so on and so forth. That will be coming in the next few days. If you have questions, please do reach out. Other than that, thank you guys for everything that you've done this season as coaches. Thank you guys for everything you've done on a day-to-day -day basis in schools. It's just a lot going on. And it means a lot to us that you guys facilitate and champion unified sports in your school systems because it means a lot to your student athletes. So I can't thank you guys enough. I'm excited to see you guys all on site next Tuesday. 
Um, and again, if you have questions, let me know. If there's things that come up, communicate. The more you communicate, the more we can take care of you guys. Other than that, everybody can enjoy the rest of their night, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, folks. <laughs>